Welcome. Let's talk about mechanical ventilation in ARDS. For general ventilator setup, refer to ventilator setup 101. So today we'll talk about the definition of ARDS. The next thing we'll talk about is the modes of ventilation. We'll talk about the target tidal volume. We'll also talk about tidal partial pressure of oxygen and saturation of oxygen. We'll then touch on PEEP and then other modes or backup modes that you can consider in ARDS. So let's get started. The definition of ARDS was recently redefined in 2012. Uh, based, it's called the Berlin definition and it uses three different criteria. One is the PAO2 FiO2 ratio. The PaO2 is taken as the partial pressure of oxygen taken during the ABG and the FiO2 is the amount of oxygen delivered during the ABG. So for example the PaO2 detected is 80 and the FiO2 is noted to be at 0 0.5 that would give you a PaO2 FiO2 ratio of 160. So based on this definition the uh, the severity of ARDS was stratified based on anything less than 300 up to a value of 200 was considered mild, 200 to 100 was considered moderate, I'm not sure why I'm writing it backwards but that's what came out of my hand, and less than 100 is considered severe. So that's uh, the severity of ARDS. The caveat is the patient needs to have a PEEP imposed of at least 5. So you need to have at least a PEEP of 5 for this criteria uh, to be met. The next part of the criteria, apart from the PAO to FIO2 ratio, is the chest x-ray. The chest x-ray requires you to have bilateral opacifications, and this should affect three or more uh, quadrants. So you have generally four quadrants in the lungs, or three or more quadrants. The caveat as well, this should not in, uh, include patients with pulmonary edema due to heart failure. So a bedside or a echo may be useful in this uh, to to, to achieve this definition. Uh, the uh, previous definition had a wedge pressure of less than 18, however, there was some evidence as well that wedge pressures of above 18 uh, was still present in patients with true ARDS patients. That's why that was uh, removed. So chest x-ray, bilateral pacifications, more than three quadrant, and it's good to get an echo to make sure you rule out pulmonary edema due to heart failure as a cause uh, for the bilateral pacification. The third aspect or the third part of the uh, definition is going to be timing. The timing includes less than seven days of an inciting factor, whether it's trauma, whether it's surgery, whether it's pneumonia, whether it's aspiration, timing less than seven days. So just to recap, it, the ARDS definition would include a timing of less than seven days, chest x-ray of bilateral pacification more than three quadrants and the severity of the PAO to FIO to ratio of less than 300 and then risk stratified as mild, moderate, and severe with at least a PEEP of five. All right, that definition aside, let's go on to the modes of ventilation. The general modes that we tend to, I tend to go to uh, the volume control ventilation or pressure control ventilation. Uh, the newer modes that, that are there as well are PCVVG or PR sorry, P what is that, PRVC, pressure regulated volume control. Now these two modes here are a hybrid of these modes over here. So what they allow you to do is they target a, a pressure, a plateau pressure, or at least an overall system pressure of less than 30, which is what you, try, you tend to target, with a volume at least of targeting tidal volumes of at least 6 cc's per kilogram. All right, so... Target tidal volume, this will get us into our next segue over here, target tidal volume of 6 cc's per kilogram, but you may decrease it down to a value of 4 cc's per kilogram if the patient is difficult to oxygenate. But don't forget, when you do decrease it that much, you may want to consider increasing the respiratory rate. If the patient's sedated, increase the respiratory rate between 20 and 30 breaths a minute. Get an ABG to evaluate that you're not causing severe hypercapnia. Permissive hypercapnia is acceptable, especially to a pH value of less uh, around 7.20 or, or, or so. But uh, when you do decrease the tidal volume due to the patient's uh, non-compliant lungs, um, do so with the idea of increasing the respiratory rate. So now we've spoken about the the modes, general modes I use, which is pressure control ventilation, but again the hybrid modes, which is pressure control ventilation volume guarantee or PRVC based on the machine that you use. We've spoken about as well the target tidal volume of uh, 4 to 6 cc's per kilogram 
based on ideal body weight and increasing the respiratory rate to make up for the loss in tidal volume. The next thing to do is to look at the target PaO2 and the target SpO2. So what I generally tend to do is I target above 55 millimeters of mercury for the PaO2 and above 85%. Now that may cause some level of discomfort, but I refer I uh, refer you to the ARDS network trials as well. You don't you don't want to set too high a bar where you end up exposing the patient to significant higher levels of FiO2. Uh, the reason is because we don't really know what a safe oxygen level is. Um, we know the higher may increase your risk of of free radical and, and prolonged lung damage or permanent lung damage even after recovery from ARDS. So the idea is to try to minimize the amount of FiO to exposure. That will get us into the next segue, which is PEEP. You want to increase PEEP gradually from 5, and I generally increase it by 1 to 2 centimeters of water up to a value of about 14 to 16. And at that point, I, I will talk about that a little later once we get to that point. But a lot of people are hesitant to increase PEEP because, for example, if you have COPD or if you have blebs or the patient's hypotensive, but understand this, that you want to gradually increase and you want to watch and see how the patient responds to it. So the patient's blood pressure, for example, is borderline. Increasing it by one or two and watching the blood pressure may be useful. Don't stop yourself from increasing PEEP just because the blood pressure is low. Most of the time, patients have already been resuscitated, uh, given fluid and so on. So the volume status has already been achieved. They're not going to necessarily drop their blood pressure. Their preload isn't going to drop dramatically just because you increase the PEEP. Because at this point, if your vessels are adequately resuscitated with fluid, uh, you will not see that drop. But you can always try and assess that. Another thing to note for is when you increase your PEEP, look at your peak pressures. If your peak pressures are increasing in tandem with your increasing PEEP, that means that whatever PEEP that you're giving is causing an overstretching of the system. So if you do increase your PEEP, watch and see whether your peak pressures increase. So example, if you increase your PEEP by 2 and you see your peak pressures as well increasing by 2, um, watch and see that it's sustained and that may indicate that the system is already overstretched at that point. So just to recap, keep increasing PEEP uh, gradually by 1 or 2 centimeters of water. Don't stop yourself from doing that just because of a fear of hypotension or fear of some uh, causing pneumothorax. You want to increase it gradually and see how the patient's response is. Now, when you reach a threshold of around 14 to 16, that for me is my my cutoff. Is then I'll consider whether to to peep. Sorry, I'll consider going to APRV at that point or prone ventilation. So APRV, refer to my section on initi initiation of APRV for further details. Prone positioning, I think, is underused uh, dramatically depending on uh, institution uh, comfort level and nursing comfort level. But the prone positioning has, has benefits both on a hemodynamic uh, perspective and even an oxygenation perspective. So prone positioning works really well and refer to the surviving sepsis campaign guidelines as well as uh, for further details. But like I said, when you hit a peep of around 14 to 16, whether you're on volume control ventilation or pressure control ventilation, you want to consider hopping at that point to APRV or prone positioning. Now you may go to APRV and then hop over to prone as well. That may be a consideration. The next thing is the other modes that we generally don't use as often but can be equally useful if you have still difficulty oxygenating someone is the use of extracorporeal membrane oxygenation uh, based on the CESAR trial. So you can look at that as well as, as a possible uh, consideration. Now there may be institutions that are not comfortable with ECMO, have little ECMO um, uh, experience, so I refer to you to, to, to speak to uh, to your institution to decide whether ECMO is a consideration. Another option is high frequency oscillatory ventilation or HFOV and uh, this is a lot of the data comes out of pediatric population but also the H1N1 epidemic gave us a lot more uh, data on patients with ARDS uh, from the flu uh, epidemic and uh, that's also a consideration. So today we uh, spoke about General ventilator setup refer to one uh, ventilator setup one hundred one, but we spoke about the definition of ARDS. We then spoke about the modes to use. We spoke about target tidal volume, target PEEP, and increasing the PEEP gradually. We spoke about other modes of ventilation such as ARDS, ECMO, high frequency oscillatory ventilation, and also the consideration for prone ventilation in these patients with ARDS. Thank you.